In this video, we're going to use the limit definition of the derivative to calculate the derivatives for x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth, and see if there's any pattern we can identify. So first, let's find f prime of x, and our definition of the derivative is the limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Now, we need to put in our function f for this. The limit is h goes to zero, which will be f of x plus h means we're putting x plus h in for x. x plus h, the quantity squared, minus f of x, which is x squared all over h. Now, a common mistake here is to say that this is x squared plus h squared. This needs to be foiled out. This is x plus h times x plus h. So I'm not going to foil that out in this particular video, but multiplying that out, you would get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared all over h. Now notice what will happen here. The x squareds are going to cancel. And now in the numerator, I can factor out an h as both terms have an h in them. h times 2x plus h all over h. And I need to keep writing limit as h goes to 0 as we haven't taken it yet. <coughs> now what happens is these h's will cancel. And now I can solve this limit by direct substitution. I couldn't before because it would have given me a 0 in the denominator. So plugging 0 in for h, I get 2x plus 0 or 2x. So if f of x is x squared, f prime of x is 2x. All right, not too bad. Let's go on to the next one, g prime of x, which is using x cubed. So we're going to have the limit as h goes to 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x all over h. So we need to plug in, or now we need to apply our function x cubed. So g of x plus h is going to be x plus h cubed minus g of x, which is x cubed all over h. Once again, this needs to be multiplied out. You can't just say, oh, it's x cubed plus h cubed. That's not correct. So this will need to be multiplied out. It's x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. Uh, for this video, that's not what I'm focusing on. So when you multiply that out, you're going to get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. And then finally minus the x cubed here. You're going to notice a lot of patterns in what we're doing. Notice the positive h cubed and the negative h cubed are going to cancel. Now again, I can, I can go ahead and factor an h out of the term in the numerator. So h times 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared all over h. Those h's cancel. Now I can plug in 0 for h. That eliminates these two terms and gives me 3x squared. <laughs> you might be starting to notice a pattern because if g of x is x cubed, g prime of x is 3x squared. Let's see if we can confirm that with x to the fourth. So h prime of x is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of h of x plus h. I guess it's a little confusing to use h here because it's a have it as the name of a function and a variable, but we'll get rid of it real quick here. So the limit as h goes to 0, h of x plus h is x plus h to the fourth minus h of x, which is x to the fourth all over h. Once again, this needs to be multiplied out. I'm not going to do it in this particular video. I'm just going to give it to you, but realize that is not x to the fourth plus h to the fourth. In fact, it comes out to be x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared. You might even be noticing the pattern in these uh, polynomials. Um, 4xh cubed plus h to the fourth, and then finally minus this x to the fourth here. 
and that all is over our h, the one we is keeping us from plugging in zero. Those x to the fourth cancel, and now we can factor out the h in the numerator. So h times 4x cubed plus 6x squared h plus 4xh squared plus h cubed all over h. Those are nice enough to cancel for us. Zero is going to go in for h, which means we lose this term, this term, and this term. And we get left with a derivative of 4x cubed. So again, you might be seeing the pattern now. The exponent comes down in front, and you decrease the exponent by 1. So for instance, if we had some function, let's call it r of x, that was x to the fifth, then r prime of x would be, drop the power down, 5x, decrease the power by 1. If we had some, pro, some function, call it the q of x, is x to the 13th, then, oops, q prime of x, drop the power down, 13x, decrease the power by 1 to the 12th. <laughs> so what we have now is what's called the power rule. That's going to be the generalization of this pattern we see going on. And that is if f of x equals x to the n, f prime of x equals n times x to the n minus 1. And this will go not just for integer values of n, but any real number for n if we have a power function.